All right, let's move from New Jersey to New York, and let's get to some state politics. There was a surprise in that state Senate yesterday on two fronts. Without advance warning, the Senate took up and voted on a New York Dream Act, which would provide in-state tuition assistance for the children of undocumented aliens. Now, the second surprise was that the majority Democrat Senate rejected the Dream Act and fell three votes short of passage. Every Republican and two Democrats, including Sim Kefelder from Brooklyn, voted no. I, you can help me out with the math here, Dominic? Why did this thing fail? I would, I would look on the surface and say that it's an election year, it's controversial, folks run from controversy when they have to be reelected. Period. Mike, why do it as a surprise? Right. Why, like, not bring up... Because, I mean, charter schools, we haven't even had a vote yet, and they've got Tuesday, people busing to Albany. Tuesday is lobby day in Albany, traditionally. It's when all the buses come up. It's when you can't get an elevator, and you have to walk up from the first floor to the ninth floor ten times uh, throughout the course of the day, and they would rather have people angry with them than have the hear their positions and be persuaded or not, and then vote against like, it. They, they just couldn't. It's a safe one in New York. I it is a safe I, 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 get, I get the numbers. I mean, I, excuse me, I get the politics of why they didn't, but I, I think immigration is a very safe place for Republicans, especially in New, in York, New York State, York. to go, and they just, they, they for some reason, they just couldn't well, see themselves it, doing it. It brings to a great question, which is how this state Senate thing works. Uh, Jeff Klein with this... Bizarro triumvirate after the whole coup and Andrew's favorite guy, Pedro Espada, and doing time now and the whole bit. My point is, I thought Cuomo thought he had a loyal rubber stamp, and he'd let Klein off the leash a few times to go do what he wants here, and I know he could have a primary and everything else. That said, though, who, who runs the Senate? Is it Democrats or is it the Republicans? Is it to matter issue by issue? I think to look at the numbers, we're at a place now in the New York State Senate where just to look at the numbers and say DR or the Independent Democratic Conference is to, is to misunderstand this sort of fluid situation. Apparently so. <laughs> a, a, and um, I don't think that the numbers necessarily matter. There are technically more Democrats. Simcla Felder, who's a friend for many, many years, um, is a very conservative guy who represents a very conservative part of, of, of Brooklyn. Um, and Jeff... Let's remember that the IDC was formed and came out of this coup in response to some pretty awful mismanagement in the then Democratic majority when they mm -hmm. briefly had it. Some of them were friends and clients, and I, I'm sure I'll get angry calls later <laughs> about this, but <laughs> it was a bad scene for a while. And we had Elliot Spitzer leaving, and we had David Patterson, and then we had Shelley. And it was just, it, it didn't work terribly well. And I think especially it's a re-election year for the legislators, but more importantly, the governor's up for re-election, the AG and the state controller. And I think a lot of people are more comfortable with this situation well, than they would be with a straight-out Democratic majority. Well, the majority. big vote that's coming down the pike, <coughs> I'm getting mixed m messages as it comes to universal pre-K. Some people saying, well, you know what, you know, de Blasio is going to win here, but it'll come at a price. I'm like, did I miss a memo? Um, how does this play out? Uh, what are you hearing? Are the votes there? I mean, how does this No, the work? votes are not there. Uh, right. The votes are there in the assembly, and they already put the money right. aside, but the votes are not there in the state senate. So what they're going to do is, and the mayor just needs to be able to say yes. <laughs> Take the money, and declare victory, frame move on victory. to the next yeah. issue. Um, but a lot of us were saying uh, months ago that the governor was not going to allow that sort of tax increase. So and it's they were be a just going to. one year gonna, deal, right? They're going to give the city the money. Right, for one year, right? We'll see. That's the part that's up in the air right now. But the okay. state senate is a check uh, for a lot of people who want to keep uh, mm. keep there from being a straight out Democratic majority. I feel like you're trying to hide a smile when you're talking <laughs> about the state senate. Well, like it's <laughs> to be fair, Dominic said this. But it, we knew how this thing was going to end for a while. From day one. It, it's the only the last guy to see him to get the memo one. was the mayor. Right. It, it, it but, was, but back oh, to the dream, dream Act and the Dream Fund. It, it, it is, as my people would say, it's a Shonda, right? It, it should have <laughs> passed. It's good policy. It's good politics. It's, just, it's a chance for Republicans in suburbs, which are increasingly Hispanic, um, and the exurbs mm -hmm. and rural countries. When I worked for Senator Schumer, we'd go to Dairy Country, Clinton, Essex, yeah. and the North Country, and folks there didn't want to talk about anything except immigration reform and how can we get more visas for people to come and work. Do ride. Democrats not want to have another vote on this this year so that they can use it as an election year cudgel? Or do you think that they'll, this is one of those things where they'll revisit it at some point and actually pass it? I believe they will revisit it and pass it. Okay. I want to talk about a personality here that um, I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of. Um, you know about the combative relationship between the mayor and the governor here. We've talked about it quite a bit on this show. Now, there's a new source of friction <coughs> maybe opening between two power bases in the state. What may be a growing feud be between the New York Council City Speaker and the governor. Now, the speaker here, 
Um, well, I, I put your name every single time. Say it. Say it for me, Michael. Melissa Mark Viverito. Viverito. I've been practicing too. Yeah, I can't say Viverito. Yeah. All right. Now the speaker took to Twitter Saturday, and not only did she complain about the governor here, but look at the language. Tax 500,000 plus earners, outrageous hedge fund backer, charter enthusiastic support, raise minimum wage, not on my watch. And she went on with even tougher language. Now, the governor, he smacked back, defending his position on charter schools, saying that public schools have as much big money backing as charter schools do. But, Dominic, you know a little bit about this. Um, it's sad. It's sad. But we should expect more of it. She well, doesn't really. No, I don't know if you can expect more. What's sad is that. Frankly, the mayor and the new city council, his hand-picked successor for the uh, city council speaker, they're proving time after time after time that they're not ready for prime time. When you're a council member, you can fire off these nonsense tweets because nobody's paying attention. But when you're the speaker, journalists are paying attention to everything that you do. Go ask Christine Quinn. Andrew Cuomo, here's some good free advice for the mayor and for the new speaker. He is not the type to turn the other cheek. He's gonna fight back whether he does it publicly at the time. He's gonna fight back on every single issue and count on him because most times he's gonna win. But she plays into the fears of some to say, my God, you've, exactly. got, you've got the socialists running uh, right. you know, the city council mm -hmm. and, and the mayor. And I believe there's more substance to de Blasio than people give him credit for, but he's let small things here kind of uh, define his first uh, couple months. But she's not doing him any favors. And, and she's got a reputation before this that, you know, first thought comes to mind, comes out of mouth. It, it's not going to help my business, but to say <laughs> that um, I, I, I never really understood the push by the mayor to help elect uh, Melissa Speaker, select Melissa Speaker. Um, I thought having a more conservative or more... Um, outer stand. borough foil there to, to, to represent different views would have been uh, uh, productive. Um, I, I think the speaker needs to talk less and tweet less and, and let herself be managed more and let herself be staffed more and not pick these fights, which are actually incorrect factually. Right. Charter schools are public schools. Um, I don't think that she should be deriding or, or criticizing the governor. Um, on Twitter, I, I don't, you know, they're members of the same party. One's more conservative than the other, but does, this is not a productive does conversation. Does Mark Marito provide cover for de Blasio's left flank? Does it, is, is this, and do you I think that de they're, do you think they're working in cahoots? Do you think, yeah. left flank. Like, no, but I, do you think that, that she enables him to not have to go as far left publicly as he might otherwise have to I because she's, she's so far out Andrew there? For him. I, I, I don't think anybody would have okayed or thought that that tweet was a good idea. I don't think that provides cover for anybody except something for us and, to talk about. And if about. you want evidence of how this is working, not just her, but how the first couple months are going, and listen, as they say, it's, it's still early, but these are new polls here, Q polls, and they've got the approval ratings here for this new mayor sitting at 45%, and that's down almost 10 points uh, since just January. Now, his numbers, well below those, if you want a frame of reference, were Michael Bloomberg stood at the same time, um, you know, a couple months into his tenure as mayor. And again, you read more into the numbers. They're still optimistic. The public is. The things are going to turn around for the city. It just seems to me, Michael, we talked about this last night, he needs some help here when it comes to the communication side. Messaging, he's, he's getting in the way of himself here. Um, and, I don't and know that comparing him to, to Mayor Bloomberg's first 12 weeks post 9-11, post enough. Giuliani, mm. rebuilding. They were very, very different people. Certainly had a different relationship yep. with the media. Um, I, I, I like our mayor. I think he's a good guy. I think he's incredibly well-intentioned. And I think that they'll get their sea legs under them. Um, but when the New York Times, I think it was yesterday, Dominic, uh, ran two editorials telling him, He's like basically a like you know a student driver I don't know who actually drives with a clutch anymore but <laughs> um, they'll get better at this but you know I mean I'm gonna anger some more people but it's relevant to the Melissa Mark yeah. Verito conversation in trying to pass UPK you don't convince Tommy Libus out of Binghamton and Dean Skelos out of yeah. Long Island to, to move on your issue by having more gay Hispanics rally in Midtown Manhattan <laughs> it just doesn't you know <laughs> but when you're hammer all you see your nails and these are movement people and they're activists and they're organizers so they're gonna do that, um, but it doesn't 
doesn't move the issue terribly well. Richard, let's face it. Maybe he should make his teenage son a deputy mayor because New York City oh, fell in love. If we're going to anger people, let's cold. let's tell the truth. Let's that's be honest. I've known Bill de Blasio for 25, 30 years. Let's tell the truth. He should make his son a deputy mayor. New York City fell in love with his son and that large afro, and that's why he's the mayor of New York today. I've, I've Period. That, I've for that commercial. I, I think it's funny that we keep talking about the mayor's press failings when just before he was inaugurated, he had to basically fire the woman who's going to be his press secretary. I wonder if that would have made a difference. I having, think you're right. Having Liz Smith in the driver's seat there, had she not gotten into that tabloid trouble. The other thing is, I don't think anything has happened yet in the de Blasio administration that is really going to be in his final no. grade. No. It's, it's what it, what, you're 100% right. When you're a kid, right. they say this will go on your final record. I don't think anything's gone on his final record just yet. It, we haven't gotten to any of the big issues. Hopefully he doesn't have to deal with no, any more snowstorms. When, right? I mean, when there is more UPK <laughs> progress, he will be uniquely identified with the issue. I but guess it's just the long game. Small, though, it's but it's it's small small as, he's the one who drove it. If he positioned himself the right way, like a lot of the guys we were talking about before we went on air tonight, yeah. he could have claimed victory out of it. It's going to be spun at the end that he didn't it's, get what he it wanted. It is a very hard thing to learn how to just say yes yeah. and thank you and move on. You'd think it would be easier, but it's very difficult. Well, challenges that he may have in New York City certainly recoverable. For a lot of Democrats come the fall on the national level, they may be looking for different jobs. Can Democrats keep control here? maybe in the Senate, but in the House, how bad is it going to be? Um, well, we're going to talk midterms here when we bring in the chair of the Democratic Congressional Committee on the Finance side, good friend to the show, Connecticut Congressman Jim Hines. Our conversation straight ahead.